So guys, today we're going to be doing dangerous health conditions. All of the ones that are really dangerous. So these are, basically I made this slide about, I don't know. I made these like many, many months ago. So let's continue. Um, these are basically all of the dangerous health conditions that I think deserve spotlight and we're gonna be doing it today So yeah, some you might know from previous videos some you might not even know because I really never talked about them And you'd be crazy. You'd be really crazy on the you'd be really shocked about the ones I chose Some of these I might have said that weren't really dangerous that I now think are super dangerous So let's just hope that you guys find this video interesting and helpful Dangerous health conditions, all the ones that are really dangerous. Hint the name, all the ones that are really dangerous. Yeah, of course, we gotta add the one and only sepsis. Sepsis is the body's overwhelming re reaction to an infection which attacks the organs. The only way of getting this is if an infection spreads the bloodstream, which attacks kidney, liver, and much more, causing the most miserable pain of your life. Because again, any damage or any like failure to any of your body parts will cause pain. And not when you just have that, when you also got all these other symptoms, it's like the most miserable, like, way you had in your entire life. You're like the most miserable ever when you have sepsis. Now, I think you'd even be more miserable with meningitis than you would be sepsis, but again, sepsis is one of those ones that you'd be really miserable. So yeah, it, it, it's amazing. It's like really amazing how medical conditions can kill you. You don't think... So, this is number two, which is even more dangerous and even more painful, it's septic shock. This is the next stage of sepsis. More dangerous, of course, which lead to a rapid decrease in blood pressure, hypotension, can cause a high fever and damage to your organs, even more than before, causing death as little as 12 hours. So, sepsis itself basically will cause that as little as 12 hours. And then, soon after those 12 hours, you would go into septic shock, which will kill you in less than a, maybe an hour. So, right there, I don't think it, I mean, I meant to put, like, septic should have killed you in 12 hours. Because septic, septic shock is not going to last for 12 hours, and then it will kill you. Septic shock, it means, like, you're at the last stage before death. Every body part shutting down as we speak. And it's just a really dangerous, miserable thing that you can have. Number three, we got to include this. I never really talked about this. Heart attack. Heart attack has risen in deaths recently. A heart attack is when your heart is damaged and isn't working properly, which causes bad chest pain on left side, sweating, anxious, and even fat, fats, heartbeat, heart rate. Ah, oh, why did I put fats? I meant to put fast heart rate, not fat. Fast heart rate killing you in as little as only 10 to 20 minutes even less maybe it depends on how bad the heart attack is if it's a massive one it can kill you in like five minutes if it's just like this like a normal heart attack 10 to 20 minutes can mainly be like uh, cause of death as little as 20 to 20 minutes and if electric shock is when your body attacks the allergy yes it's a serious allergic reaction which can kill as little as five or maybe five to ten minutes more minutes but will kill quickly it causes face swelling and even tongue swelling which blocks the airway leading to trouble breathing and it can even choke you to death and even leading to a lot of possible complications <sighs> all right so anaphylactic shock what well, i need to say a lot of things about this because it's one of those very well-known ones because a lot of people experience these. So, anaphylactic shock is one of the most dangerous health conditions in the entire world. It's number two on the list for me. Because this is just like a heart attack. Of course, a heart attack's a lot more, like, less dangerous. But then there's that chance where it could be more dangerous because, again, heart attack is less common. Anaphylactic shock is a lot more common because this happens with an allergy. So you could eat, you could say you're allergic to peanuts and you're eating something which you don't know actually contains peanuts. You're going to die. You're going to die no matter what. If you, you don't have anyone around you, you don't got your EpiPen, you're going to die. And it's the sad, the sad thing. So yeah. Hyperthermia. 
treatment, a type of treatment in which body tissue is heated to as high as 113 degrees Fahrenheit to help damage and kill cancer cells with little or no harm. So I know a lot of people might think hyper. I know a lot of people might think hyperthermia is a serious medical condition and it's actually just dangerous and there's nothing good that will come out of hyperthermia. So hyperthermia, a treatment, I'll just redo it because I didn't always say everything I needed to say. So hyperthermia, now a lot of people are going to think, no, there's no way hyperthermia can help, you know, kill cancer cells. Well, it can. Of course, hyperthermia isn't always a bad thing to have or to get. Of course, that if you have doctors around you that actually give you this to actually help out kill body cancer cells and everything, it's not dangerous. But if it's such as like heat related illnesses, such as hyperthermia from being outside too long or a heat stroke, then that's when you need to start worrying and that's basically when it starts to get dangerous. But hyperthermia, you know, the way it is, it's not dangerous. But it can be if it's caused by thyroid storm or much more. And sepsis. But again, it can help kill cancer cells with little or no harm to normal tissue. So there could be a little harm to the tissue because, again, 113 degrees Fahrenheit can kill you. And I know that there's this one story about a guy that survived a high temperature of 112 degrees Fahrenheit. And he's still around to tell the story. Now, again, this could have been like many years ago. But again, that couldn't be that because this is certainly when it was back in the 1900s, 1800s, whatever. They didn't really have that many good resources to help people with bat, you know, fight bacteria infections, because back in the day they didn't really have the type of treatment and the type of technology we have to come up with advanced treatments for the medical condition that they had. Back in the day, they had like maybe a couple doctors, and back in the day, they had to legit cut off the limb whenever there was a war going on. This all comes back to sepsis. We'll tell about a story right now. Sepsis, all right, because it's kind of related to hyperthermia. It back in the day there was high. It was also known as blood poisoning. So blood poisoning is of is also known as sepsis, which now they changed the name instead of blood poisoning to sepsis. Now sepsis is very dangerous. Back in the day, if someone came up with sepsis or got shot, they would have to cut off the lip. Nowadays, they actually can treat it with actual medications instead of having to cut off the limb right away. So yeah, what is in a medical emergency? So this is going to have other things besides medical conditions. It's when you're, you're at a life or death with, health, with a health condition. And if it goes untreated, it will lead to death. So when you need, so, when, so we need you to come to the hospital or your life could, could end in hours to minutes. So it's a you need to go to the hospital ASAP. Which means, as soon as possible. That's what ASAP means. Now, I don't know why I put in in. I meant your life could end in hours to minutes. So, it's a you need to go to the hospital ASAP. So, what is an MRI? So, a magnetic, a magnetic, a magnetic, magnetic re resonance imaging. MRI is a non-invasive imaging technology that produces three-dimensional detailed atomical images. So this is the machine. They go in there to see like scans of your brain and much more. What is a CT scan? So a, sc a computerized tomography is a CT scan. Combines a series of x-ray images taken from different angles around your body and uses computer technology basically and this will basically show pregnancy and much more and it will basically show brain scans and a whole bunch of stuff so medical conditions you'll basically get either get an MRI or a CT scan and basic, mainly you will get like if you hit your head you'll get a CT scan of your head to make sure there's no you know inside bleeding or any trauma um what is the C CT used for and uh, to identify disease or injury with various regions of the body so most of the body parts and to have diseases you'll need a ct scan to see like all the bleeding and all the stuff that you really can't see with your eyes but the machine will pick it all up damage damage to bones injuries to internal organs problem with blood flow stroke and cancer which is also stuff it can help with um with the ct scan what's super venture super Vascular 
tachycardia, a heart condition featuring episodes of a normally fast heart rate goes from 80 to 200 in just seconds and is usually life-threatening. So if you have a heartbeat that one minute's 80 and then you suddenly start this like heavy breathing because your heartbeat went up to 200, go to the hospital immediately. I cannot address that enough. Don't think it's some stupid event that's going on because it is a serious event and I'm tired of people saying, oh, it's not real or, oh, it's nothing to worry about. It is a lot of things to worry about, okay? Not only can it kill you, it can make you brain dead. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, do things like that. Trust me, I wouldn't. I'd go to the hospital. Organ problems section. So this is organ problems. Hypothyroidism. Your thyroid doesn't work as good as it should, so it leads to weight gain and other distressing symptoms, but isn't to be known as life-threatening. I know it says life-threatening, but just hear me out. Not all of them are. Hyperthyroidism, the one that's super life-threatening. Your thyroid works too well, so it causes weight loss, which with mainly the same symptoms of hypothyroidism, but can be life-threatening. Here we are. Thyroid storm. Very dangerous. Top three, in my opinion. Also known as thyroid toxic crisis, is an acute life-threatening complication of hyperthyroidism that presents with multi-system involvement. The mortality associated with thyroid storm is estimated to be 8 to 25 percent, despite modern advancements in its treatment and supportive measures. So even if you do have measures, there's a possibility you might not walk out of thyroid storm alive. Thyroid storm symptoms is rapid heartbeat, a high temperature, high blood pressure. So right there is hyperthyroidism. And not only we have that, you have tachycardia, hyperthermia, hypertension, yellowing of the skin and eyes, jaundice, severe agitation and confusion, loss of consciousness, and seizures. Tachycardia, I mean, thyroid storm complications is arrhythmias, high output t- cardiac failure, heart failure basically, seizures, delirium, and coma, elevated liver en- enzymes, jaundice, abdominal cramps, vomiting, diarrhea, adrenal fibrillation, and th- thrombolism. I have no idea how you pronounce that. Spleen rupture. A ruptured spleen is typically caused by a blow to the left upper stomach or the left lower chest. This can not. This isn't one of those that can kill you in a couple minutes. It t- basically takes a couple days, depending on how bad the bleeding is. Symptoms of spleen rupture: pain, pain in the right up the upper left stomach, tenderness when you touch the upper left stomach, left shoulder pain, confusion, lightheadedness, and dizziness. Because when you have um, when you have what's the bleeding? Oh my gosh, no! If you have Internal bleeding, it can cause confusion, lightheadedness, and dizziness because you're losing blood. You need blood for all the symptoms, all of your systems to work. Appendicitis, when your appendix becomes sore, swollen, and diseased and can rupture. Symptoms are sudden pain that begins on the right side of the lower abdomen, sudden pain in, that begins around your navel and sometimes sifts to your lower right abdomen, Pain that worsens if you cough, walk, or make other jarring movements. Nausea and vomiting and loss of appetite. Colon rupture, intestinal per- perforation, devi- defined as a loss of, con- of continuity of the bowel wall, as a potentially devastating complication that may result from a variety of disease processes. Common cause of perforation include trauma, inflammation, inflammation, um, infection, malignancy, ischemia and obstruction rupture uh r- symptoms are abdominal pain or cramping which is usually severe bloating or a swollen stomach abdomen which is a stomach fever or chills nausea and vomiting pain or tenderness when you touch your st- abdomen now one thing that you should know about a colon rupture the most disgusting thing is it can lead to vomiting your own poop it's true you can vomit your own poop if you have col- colon rupture Brain aneurysm. A cerebral aneurysm, also known as a brain aneurysm, is a weak or thin spot on the an artery in the brain that balloons or bulges out and fills with blood. The bulging aneurysm can put pressure on the nerves or brain tissue. It may also burst or rupture, spilling blood in the surrounding tissue called a hemorrhage. Symptoms of this is nausea, vomiting, stiff neck, blurred or double vision, sensitive to light, seizure, a dropping eyelid, loss in consciousness, confusion. Brain aneurysm complications, hemorrhagic stroke, brain damage, coma, and even death. Brain aneurysm drilling operations. So this is... (laughs) 
Now, you might think I'm crazy, but this is the, this is actually true. This is known as a brain aneurysm drilling operation. Using a special drill, a surgeon drills one or two small holes in the skull to expose the dura, this, which is the pressure. The surgeon on the, that opens the dura and drains any excess fluid to, re, to reduce pressure within the skull. The surgeon may replace a temporary drain to continue the, to drain the fluid or the dura and scalp will be closed right away. So what they have to do is they have to take, they have to take a drill and drill a hole, a hole in the in the skull's head, basically in the person's skull. So if they hit the wrong spot, that's why not, that's why nurses and why trained people have to do this. Not medical like these like, not trained people. They're basically like people that are becoming doctors or nurses. So they're not like yet fully professionals. They cannot do this procedure because of how dangerous and risky it is. If they hit the wrong spot in the skull, it will lead to brain damage and even death in one second after it happens. Not even one second, the guy could be dead. That's why drilling a hole in someone's skull to relieve pressure is so dangerous. That's why medical doctors and nurses have to do it. And not always is that actually the case. Because sometimes they can even mess up. Because having to do this puts a lot of stress on their system and on the brain. And when they hit the wrong part and they actually hit the brain and not just the skull, then it can kill you. Because one hit to the brain, like a gunshot to a brain, can kill you because it kills the brain right when a bullet hits. The skull is what protects the brain, and once the skull is basically destroyed like a skull fracture, then there's a possibility that anything could go inside the brain and infect it. That's why a skull is the outer part of the brain to support it and to help it survive and, and keep it safe. So that's why not trained professionals cannot do this procedure, and even if they're trained, sometimes it doesn't always work out for them. Five meningitis. Meningitis and inflammation, swelling up, or detective membranes are covering the brain and the spinal cord. Meningitis symptoms, stiff neck, severe headache, nausea and vomiting, confusion, or trouble concentrating, seizures, sleepiness, trouble waking, sensitivity, the light. Hearing loss, seizures, limb weakness, difficulties with vision, speech, language, memory, and co communication, as well as scarring and limb amputations after sepsis. So yes, as I said, a, couple, a video I released a few minutes ago, um, put the link in the description, as well as scarring and limb amputations after sepsis. I told you, sepsis will can cause that. That, I think that's all. Yeah, that's all. So, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.